Hey, what's up? Mariah here and welcome to part three of this IS Boxer video series. In this video, we've got a handful of topics to cover which don't necessarily relate to one another. So I've gone ahead and broken this one up into different sections. Feel free to navigate to the section you're most interested in or just watch the entire video because it's super informative. I mentioned in the first video of this series that the advanced options of the Quick Setup Wizard can help make setting up a new character set a little bit easier. When you first enable the advanced options, two additional settings will appear near the bottom of the hotkeys tab, as well as two more tabs named Control Groups and Key Maps. The two settings on the hotkeys tab are pretty self-explanatory, and these are the same two options found under each specific character set, so let's focus on these two new tabs instead. The Control Groups tab handles action target groups, and whether you happen to be adding some new characters to your team who will need to be assigned to some existing ATGs, or you just want to create some new ones, you can do all of that here. For example, Angelic is my Priest Healer, and I'd like to add her to the ranged Healer and Priest action target groups, so I can just drag and drop the ones that I want onto her, and they appear underneath. Now, if you want to create and assign a new action target group while you're in this tab, then you'll have to add an existing ATG to a character and then rename it to whatever you want. And you'll have to repeat this for how many ever characters you'd like in the new ATG because it won't show up in the list on the left until you complete the wizard and the ATG is actually created. But the next time you go through the wizard, it will be there. As for the key maps tab, You'll see that it's pretty much the same type of setup as the Control Groups tab, where you're dragging and dropping key maps in order to assign them to a character or character set. The added convenience in this tab is that you can use the Rename Me Class Combat Key Map, that's a mouthful, to quickly create your class key maps. So for the healer, I'm creating and adding her three spec specific key maps, which are Discipline, Holy, and Shadow. If these key maps had already existed in my setup, they would have appeared in the list on the left next to the rest of my key maps, but they didn't, so I'm quickly doing that now before finalizing the wizard. And when I'm finished, you can see that they have been created, as well as assigned to my priest. So while it's not necessary to use the wizard in order to set up your action target groups or class key maps, it might come in handy from time to time to do so. Now there's a slight visual discrepancy when it comes to displaying pre-existing action target groups or key maps that are assigned to pre-existing characters while configuring the advanced settings of the wizard. For example, my paladin is already assigned to the melee ATG, but when I'm in the control groups tab, that doesn't show. Same thing on the key maps tab. He's already assigned to the paladin set of class key maps, but they don't appear under his character on the right. You could see it in the list on the left as already existing, and if I cancel out of the wizard and check my paladin character, he's definitely assigned to both the key maps and the action target group, but it didn't reflect that in the wizard. Now there's no need to worry because it's, it's just a visual issue which doesn't adversely affect anything. And if you happen to accidentally re-add a character to an ATG or a key map that they were already assigned to, nothing bad is going to happen. In a prior video, I had mentioned that these situational mapped keys weren't set in stone. So how do you go about changing them without screwing everything up? Well, you can go about it one of two ways. First, you can just reuse whatever is already listed. So if you know you'll never ever be setting up a rotation for PvP, then go ahead and rename it to something else. But you have to rename that mapped key in every single section. So you have to rename it in Combat Hotkeys, Virtual Combat, and if you've already created them, every single class key map as well. On the other hand, if you want to expand upon the list, it's probably easiest to just create a copy of an existing mapped key in each of the three sections of the Pro System. Rename it to what you want it to be, and then make sure that the action of your newly created mapped key in Combat Hotkeys is pointing at the correct mapped key in Virtual Combat. Adding in additional mapped keys to this system can end up being a tedious task if you have a lot of class key maps, so sometimes it's better to think about what other situational mapped keys you may want to use before you create all of the class key maps at once. There's no right or wrong answer as to how many or how few you create, and it's entirely up to you. Now in the prior two videos, I had repeatedly said that when setting up your rotations in the class key maps, that you should be using a target of window current. 
But what if you want to assign an action target group or set up round robin? Well, both of those types of targets would be set in the combat hotkeys key map. For example, I have an ATG created specifically for my characters that have an available interrupt spell, and I've assigned that as the target of my interrupt mapped key in the combat hotkeys key map. Not only that, but I've also enabled round robin so that I don't waste all of my interrupts in a single key press. Generally, when you set up any type of special target, you want it to be set at the highest level, meaning wherever your hotkeys are initially assigned, and in this case, that's the combat hotkeys key map. Iceboxer comes equipped with a mapped key action specifically made for adjusting your virtualization on the fly, and it's conveniently named Mapped Key Virtualization Action. What this action does is allow you to temporarily reassign, redirect, or cancel out the virtualization that is currently being used. And while the text in this action itself says mapped key, it also works with key maps in the same way. Now there are numerous uses for this action across several different configurations, but I'm only going to give an example based upon what I've covered in this series so far. So up to this point, I've mentioned the layout of the pro system being combat hotkeys, virtual combat, character level virtualization, and the class key maps. In this breakdown, the virtualization starts with the virtual combat key map because it's what I've designated to be virtualized in the character level assignment right here. And because that's the only key map I'm virtualizing in this entire setup, then that means I'm going to select it in this area here. And just like when you're assigning virtualization at the character level, if you only want to work with a key map, then leave the mapped key area blank. Now I'm not going to talk about the first option because it doesn't necessarily work into the virtualization pattern used by the pro system, and I'm going to start with do nothing instead, instead. This option is pretty self-explanatory, and if I was to execute this action as is, I'd be telling Iceboxer to virtualize virtual combat into nothing for my selected target. In other words, I'd be completely removing my target from the mix, and they wouldn't do anything at all while I was pressing my hotkey during combat. One example for why you might want to do this is that there, there may be a specific boss encounter where you want to remove certain characters from their DPS rotations or other rotations for whatever reason, and this is one way to accomplish that. Now, if I did end up turning virtual combat into nothing and then wanted to restore virtualization afterwards, I'd use the next option down, which is do this mapped key instead. And remember, mapped key is interchangeable with key map. So I'd select the class key map that I'd like to go back to using, which is, for this example, Paladin Protection, because that's what this character was originally assigned to, and that would be it. Now, of course, I would have either separate mapped keys or multiple steps set up for all of these different changes that I might be making. And with that said, I do have a quick demonstration to show this off. So here I've got four different mapped keys, and the first three are going to tell Virtual Combat to virtualize into either DPS Rotation 1, DPS Rotation 2, or DPS Rotation 3, with a fourth mapped key set to stop virtualization altogether. Each of these DPS rotation key maps are set up to do something slightly different, and I'm going to be using a high level warrior class for this example to give me access to more abilities. Now you can also see that I've got these three separate action bars showing in game. They're bound to one through three unmodified, one through three with shift, and one through three with control. These fancy menu buttons were created specifically for this demonstration using ISBoxer's menus, and they're being used to switch between each level of virtualization, as well as just highlighting which action bar you should be focusing on. So let me demonstrate this for a bit, and I'm going to continuously press my 2 key, which has been my main DPS rotation hotkey all throughout this series, and I'm going to be doing that while I swap between the different levels of mapped key virtualization with these menu buttons. I chose menu buttons in this case because they're much more visual, and I was hoping that people would get a better sense as to what's going on with this setup, rather than just taking my word for it that I'm pressing hotkeys to make the change. You can see that I'm able to change up my DPS rotation with mapped key virtualization, and it's very similar to action bar paging. That's what it's referred to in World of Warcraft at least, and that's where you have multiple action bars built into one, and you change the, the page of your action bar whenever you want even on the fly when in combat. And I imagine that other games out there on the market have something similar to this. But besides changing up my rotation, 
I can fully take my character out of the loop by disabling virtualization altogether. This is what the do nothing instead option does. You can see that I'm still pressing my two key on my keyboard overlay, but my character is doing nothing. And there you have it. This is how the mapped key virtualization action can be used with the pro system. Generally, you're going to be using this action to temporarily alter your DPS rotation on the fly, like I've shown here, without the need to go back into Iceboxer, change a bunch of settings, and then re-export. Now I say temporarily because whenever you do happen to re-export your settings from ISBoxer, everything will revert to whatever is set at the character level. And if you're trying to change a character's rotation for a more permanent amount of time, then it's probably best to just make the adjustment at the character level and be done with it. You know, these small DPS rotation adjustments are more often used when you reach an encounter which needs a specific set of abilities and whatnot. And it just cuts down on the time required to change settings within your ISBoxer profile when you get to that point. Well, that's it for this video. It was just a few miscellaneous items that I wanted to clear up, which didn't fit well in the others. With that said, I will be covering a pro system specific method of healing in the next video, which is going to be very exciting. So I suggest checking that out. And for any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the Iceboxer forum or the live chat.